Hi, it's Anna from the Heartbeat Hive, and I'm back with another video of my little diagrams. For those of you who enjoy them and apply them and find use in them. All right, first I want to show you my T-shirt because it's badass. Uh, it's got Little Richard and Nina Simone. <laughs> uh, anyways, it says True Legends. All right, uh, so I want to continue on the lunch that I had with my friend, if you saw my other video about the hero cycle, um, was very interesting. Um, and another diagram that I drew for her, because she's super talented and has lots of ideas, right? And uh, in during COVID, she sort of like felt uninspired and uh, was consuming a lot versus creating. And so I drew this little diagram, which I, I love because it's so simple, yet we forget it because we're just off in la la land. I say we, I lovingly say we <laughs> as an artist. All right, so the the dynamic is this it's consume this is my little equation and then you have create so sometimes we can get into uh uber like consumption mode so uh you've been on tiktok for like three hours <laughs> not me i don't get on tiktok uh why because i got a lot of shit to do but <clears throat> During your leisure time, that's great. But if you're supposed to be working and creating and you're not really getting sparked creatively through the consumption, then that's that's not the right dynamic, right? You can only do that for so long. Then you'll be like, oh shit, I haven't made anything. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about here. It's totally okay to be on whatever network you want to be on to watch any show you want to watch, um, to read any book you want to read. But we're talking about having that hunger to create, right? And here's the problem. And here's what I'm getting at. The more that you consume, the more that you have the uh, possibility to start comparing yourself. So you're consuming, right? And you're looking at other people's art, listening to other people's music and then you might get to a point where you're like, huh, they're better than me, <laughs> you know, or damn, I can't pull that off, or I don't have that equipment, or some other excuse that you tell yourself instead of just freaking getting in there and starting to create. And all artists know that creating has a process to it. While we can pull from the divine or infinite or be in flow and it can feel effortless, it does take a uh, skill and it does take a challenge, which is part of a flow trigger, having a balance between challenge and skill. But anyways, this was the dynamic that I was talking to her about. And I asked her, I said, so are you in consume mode or are you in create mode? And when she kind of leaned back and thought about it, she was like, I'm in consume mode. <laughs> so how do we be, how do we break through and stop consuming? Well, sometimes you have to make like a little timer, right? Sometimes you have to develop a plan like, okay, I'm going to gather research. I'm going to consume for a then. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to create and build up my skills with, say, watercolor technique. And then I'm going to create something. I don't care how good it is, but I'm going to start it from start to finish. And I'm going to give myself one day to do it. And then you have the finished thing, right? But you can't compare an unfinished, untouched, unattempted thing with what's already out there. You see, you have to actually try and attempt and put the effort forward in order to have real comparison, you know, and comparison doesn't have to be a bad thing. I didn't mean for it to sound like that, but when we aren't creating and this balance is not in tune with 
the season of your life or the stage or the chapter you're in or you've become sort of obsessed with consuming um, in the sense of like you're getting dopamine hits every time you see something new, um, then it can be addictive to consume instead of create. And you can talk yourself out of creating anytime. <laughs> um, you can always think someone's better, someone has more resources, somebody you know has been doing it longer than I have. Well, at that point, it's up to you to decide, am I creating for the joy of it? Am I creating for the curiosity, for the passion of what it actually is? Or am I just trying to copy someone? Am I just trying to have someone else's experience or result? Because that's really not a healthy way to create. And I will say also, if, if you're looking around and you see inspiration in other people's art, other people's creations, you know, meals, you know, crazy cocktail recipes, their paintings, their photography, the way they dance, if you're looking at them in a sense of competition, boo boo, you got to take a step back and think about it from the pure joy that they're experiencing by creating it. That's why they're doing it. In the essence of what, why are they so good? The top performers, deep down, they have done that move. They have made the thing. They have tried millions of times, thousands of times, hundreds of times, whatever the person's skill level. But they had to decide that they wanted to go through the process of progressing, of seeking a challenge, of building their skills, and to have discipline to follow through and not only consume, but create. So what happens after you create? Well, you have the experience of the process. Hopefully you have some joy in there, some satisfaction, but guess what? Then, the rest of the world gets to consume what you create. Ding, 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 winner, winner. So you get to be part of the field, which is what Mihai Chikset Mihai talks about in flow and creativity and innovation. Having a contribution to the field, yes, you can consume and know what's out there or maybe a portion of what's out there because the world is big and there's lots of you know creations out there, but you don't create and you don't take those steps in possibly failing, possibly not being seen, possibly not making it. If you don't take those steps though, then you'll never know. You'll just sit there and consume and consume and consume and never really know for yourself. That's really what matters to your experience, your joy, your meaning, your potential, realizing your best self. And I want to tell you that I believe in you. I believe you can do whatever that thing is that you're trying to do. I 100% believe in you. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, another one of my really precise, <laughs> really complicated drawings. Um, I will say that I do offer private coaching. Um, I work with anyone from musician to an entrepreneur, uh, videographers, actors, comedians, writers, anyone that's creative I, I work with because what we're after is creating meaning, getting you into flow, designing a lifestyle that is really tuned to who you are and what you want from your life. That's what I do. I have uh, science-backed methods. I have... Uh, mindset work that I did for a long time um, and then I have my own experience as a performer as you know an art educator an arts nonprofit manager uh, and then my music industry jobs so uh, my field is very uh, you know has a lot of variables and experience but when I coach I work with you and your specific goals and, and your vision for yourself and then we work on getting you there through lifestyle design. Um, I do have a monthly membership that is also available. So anyways, you can see the description somewhere probably below and uh, check out more details there. All right. Th
then stay productive. I believe in you. And I'll see you soon.